Hello boys and girls, welcome. I am Sister Antoinette. For the past few weeks, we have been learning about the seven I am statements Jesus made, which are recorded in the book of John. Each time Jesus says, I am, we are reminded that he is God. Each I am statement also tells us a new part of Jesus' character. It tells us a little bit more about who Jesus is. Today, we're studying John 10 verses 11 to 16. It tells us what Jesus meant when he called himself the Good Shepherd. But first, let me ask, do any of you have pets, maybe a dog, a cat, a hamster, or even a goldfish? If you do, then there's a very good chance your pet knows who you are. They know your voice. They know you love them by taking care of them because they're special. Well, your responsibility of taking care of a pet is a tiny little bit like being a shepherd. Do you know what a shepherd is? A shepherd is someone who takes care of the sheep. Like David from David and Goliath, you might know a thing or two about sheep, like their wool is used to make clothes, or that they eat grass, or that they live in flocks. But there are other qualities of sheep that the Bible uses to compare to animals to us. Sheep are not very smart. They tend to follow the flock and just do what they see other sheep doing. They also like to wander away and are easy targets for predators without a watchful shepherd to guide and guard them. Sounds familiar? Well, the focus of today's lesson is on how Jesus shares that he is the good shepherd. What does that mean? Let's start by reading the word of Jesus himself. In John 10, 14 verses 15, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me, just as my father knows me and I know the father. And in John 10, Jesus makes this powerful promise. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus makes it very clear that he is the good shepherd, the one who takes care of the sheep. Can anyone guess then who the sheep are? That's right, we are the sheep. We're easily misled from what is right, but God promises that he loves us and he cares for us if we will follow his instruction. Before we go on and look at other parts of this story, let's get a good idea on what sheep are like. Have any of you ever seen sheep at a petting zoo or farm? Sheep aren't the cleanest of animals, are they? They're smelly and dirty and they lay down on the grass. They get burrs and dirt caught up in their wool. They can't help it. There are a type of bugs that like to live in the wool on top of the sheep heads too, and they can't clean themselves either. If someone doesn't get rid of these bugs, the sheep can go blind. So without the shepherd's help, sheep stays dirty. Let's think about us now. Can we clean ourselves of our spiritual dirtiness? Is there anything we can do all by ourselves to wash our sins? Of course not. We have to go to Jesus, our good shepherd, to get rid of our sins. Not only are sheep dirty, they're not very smart. Sheep don't think for themselves. They just follow other sheep who seem to be in charge. This means that sheep will even follow other sheep right over the edge of a cliff without another thought. Can you think of ways we follow others without thinking? Another interesting fact about sheep is that they have no sense of direction. The poor things couldn't find their way out of a wet paper bag. If they wander off from the flock and shepherd, it's hard, if not impossible, for them to get back on their own. The sheep has to come and find them. Jesus shares a story about this very thing happening in Luke 15 verses 47. It says, if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them get lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go search for the one that is lost until he find it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. This is what our good shepherd Jesus does with us when we start to wander away from him. He comes after us and he carries us back to the fold and then he celebrates that we are back in the right relationship with him. Now imagine if the shepherd didn't come after the little lost sheep, the sheep would probably be okay, right? 
I mean, if a cat or a dog get lost, it can fend for itself pretty well for a while, can it? If anything, or anyone tries to come and attack a cat, the cat will scratch anyone who gets too close. And the dog, if it feels it's being attacked, will bite the attacker. So a sheep, if it's going to be attacked by a wolf, will it fluff itself up to look big and mean? Show off his sharp pointy teeth and charge the attacker, right? No way. Sheep don't have sharp pointy teeth or claws. They can growl or puff themselves up to seem bigger. They can't even run away. They aren't fast enough and those crawny little legs of theirs. If a shepherd doesn't come after a lost sheep, that sheep is definitely wolf food. How are we like sheep in this way? When we wander away from the flock, when we stop going to church and stop spending time with other Christians, we have a hard time living like Jesus wants us to. We can't protect ourselves from the dangers and temptations of the world. If we want to be like Jesus, which is what life is all about, then we need to spend time with Jesus and others who are learning to live like him. The last fact I want to share about the sheep is pretty funny and also a good picture of us. If a sheep falls down and end up on its back, it can't get up again on its own. It will just lay there with its little legs in the hair until either someone helps them up or they die. When we get into a place in our life where we feel like we cannot go on, either through our own sins or through tough times, we can't save ourselves. We are totally dependent on Jesus Christ to save us, to lead us and to keep us clean. There is one more verse I want to look at before we close today. It's the last verse in our passage. John 10 verse 16, it says, I have other sheep too. They are not in the sheepfold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice and there will be one folk with one shepherd. Who are these other sheep from another sheepfold that Jesus is talking about? That's us. At the time, Jesus, Jesus was talking to a group of Jewish people. They all believed that Savior was coming to save them. They had no idea that it would be Jesus, and they had no idea that God's good and wonderful plan is to save not only the Jewish people, but everyone in the whole wide world. Jesus is saying here that anyone can believe in him and follow him, and that all of us together, no matter where we are, what we look like, or what kind of church we go to, we are all together in the same flock, the same family, if we follow Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd. Today, we're going to close in prayer in a slightly different way. We're going to watch a short video on Psalm 23. It praises God for being our Good Shepherd and tells of the great things He does for us. Bible chapters for kids. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my loving shepherd, he gives me what I need. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He blesses me with a place to rest. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He gives me peace. He restoreth my soul. He gives strength to my spirit. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He helps me do what is right, so that others will see how good the Lord is. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, so even when things look dark and scary, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will not be afraid, because God is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He protects me and brings me comfort. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He blesses me even in front of those who don't like me. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. God welcomes me with his love. I overflow with his blessings. Surely goodness and mercy 
shall follow me all the days of my life. His goodness and love will always be there for me. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I will live with him forever here and in heaven. That was great, wasn't it? Jesus is the Good Shepherd who sacrificed his life for our lives. Your scripture for this week is taken from John 10, verses 11. It says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And for your activity this week, I want you to draw a sheep and make a list of all the Good Shepherd in your life. It can be a parent, a friend, or even your pet. Share it with us in Zoom session this Sunday at 1 p.m. And if you'd like, with your parents' permission, we can also add your perfect drawing to our Instagram site. But be sure to get your parents' permission. That's it, boys and girls. I am Sister Antoinette. See you next time. <laughs>